We can and there's station isn't this طيب الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين quick thing about the i'tikaf first Atikaf, the first thing, is sunnah for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is ta'a, form of ibadah, obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to be alone, away from everybody, away from the dunya, concentrate upon the akhirah, uh, to focus on the ibadah, to let go whatever has to do with the dunya, and be alone with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even before he became a prophet, before he became, he كان عنده عبادة تفكر الخلوة مع الله سبحانه وتعالى عندما كان في غار حراء the cave حراء so this is something special سبحان الله I remember 20 years ago 15 years ago nobody was making اعتكاف this is something great thing to see nowadays when you see ما شاء الله many brothers and even the sisters they call them make اعتكاف because the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم he made اعتكاف and his wives after he died they were making اعتكاف and the Sunnah, look at this Sunnah here, to build, they built a tent with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Masjid. He used to make Salah, go right back to his tent, so he will be reading Quran or making dhikr, istighfar, dua. So this is something special, opportunity. And this is practice Sunnah, and like I said, away from everything will distract you or disturb you from what we are, the, for the main reason why we are here for. Which is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have clearly said in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ He said, indeed, I have, I have created jinn and man to worship me, Allah said. So, this is the sunnah, obedience. So, let's try to do the best out of it. Since Allah subhanahu wa have, you have the time. Because you never know. First of all, the first thing, you never know if you're going to be alive again. One thing. The second thing, you don't know if you're going to be available again. So, there's two things, two, two factors not everyone has that the third thing which is the most important thing the intention and the guidance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you going to be guided for this is allah subhanahu wa going to guide you to become or to do atika because a lot of people they have time but they're not doing atika a lot of people they don't even think about atika so to be grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the guidance or his guidance all right for the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do it the right way to do it the right way. So we socialize all year long. Every day we could do it, every second. But like we said, the month of Ramadan, Allah has said, only a few days. Only number of days, which is 30 days. Imagine the 10 nights. The 10 nights. So this is the time. Now we do the Taraweeh, and you have all the way till 3.30. What should we do? Chit chat. If you are sleepy, take a nap. No problem. When you hear Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what should that Israel mean? He has nothing to do with this life. He's just away from everything you enjoy in your life. Then he said, Ahya Layla. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make Qiyam. What does that mean, Ahya Layla? He made Qiyam. Then the whole dunya of is contained. As you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have gave us short lives in comparison to the ummah or the nations before us. One of his blessings to make us have Laylat al-Qadr. One of his blessings, he made us khayr ummah khajjnas, the best ummah ever brought to, man, to mankind, the best nation throughout the history. Allah have chosen Bani Israel, but they used to be. Then the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best and the biggest. The biggest in the Jannah. Two thirds of the people of Jannah will be among from the Muslim. Even though we are the last Ummah to come. 
the Yehud before us, the Christian before us, and every nation followed for the prophets before us. They were, I mean, they before us, but they still smaller amount than the Muslim. And this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the barakah. So the rules of Iqtikaf again, to sit, it's like the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, the hadith of Rasul, if you sit in the masjid, if you make salat al jamaah in the masjid, sit in congregation, so stay in the masjid till sunrise, wait 15 minutes and make, make two rak'ah, Allah reward for, for uh, hajj and umrah. A lot of people, they finish salat, they chit chat. That's not the case. Make dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's two conditions, jama'ah, sit in the masjid and make the care all the way then you get the reward for Hajj and Umrah. Sit here in the masjid, talk, get busy with things here, distracted with uh, side talks and so on, then it's not going to work. So the thing is, there's going to be the same thing with the Atikaf. Atikaf, you are in the masjid. The masjid of Rasul, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi had described what the masajid are for. Say it for Quran, for Salah or Dhikr or reading Quran and so on. Is not something we have to make sure, even I'm not trying to pinpoint at anyone, but when you make the salam, don't make the salam so loud. Like, is it, this is the subhanallah, this is the masjid. We need to take it easy. Of course, nothing bad, but this could be best. I mean, if you say salam, regular salam. So it would be much, much better, inshallah, for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the thing is, one of the rules how to do the masjid. Today, inshallah, let's refresh our, our memories about the wudu. Inshallah tomorrow we'll try to uh, start with the book Zad al-Ma'ad Fi Hadi Khair al-Ibad This is a beautiful book inshallah I have like a summary of that book inshallah We finish it by the last 10 nights if we can inshallah By the last day or the last night of the 10 nights So the wudu always see like we talked about wudu many many times But subhanAllah the wudu itself has so much fadl and virtues from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to it. So much good deed. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, if you make the right, the proper wudu, then you say, ashhadu an la ilaha illa wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu an muhammad an abduhu rasuluh, Allahumma ajanni min tawabin wa ajanni min tatahirin. The eighth gate of Jannah will be open for you. So the, uh, Rasul, so the thing, one of the things we need to practice and help us out when you aren't making the wudu, think about the wudu, that this is the first condition for Salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved al-mutahirin. Allah loved those who purify themselves. So this is something Allah loves. Bilal radiallahu anhu, he have became a Rasulullah He said, I have heard your footsteps in Jannah before anyone else. Of course, he's not higher than Abu Bakr and Umar, no doubt. But shows here his status so high for one small action he had done. Every time he lost his wudu, he made wudu. Every time he did he did Turaqa radiallahu anhu. SubhanAllah, he surpassed many, many other Sahaba for small actions. So the wudu definitely he did the proper way. So let's make, for example, in the 10 nights, every time you lose your wudu, make wudu and make Turaqa. As Bilal radiallahu anhu, Allah he used to do. So the thing is, little stuff here we do and make us, SubhanAllah, at the, put us in the way higher a place in the Jannah and make you enter Jannah with simple thing as the hadith we mentioned in the Khatir and the Dars between the four rak the, the rak'at after the four rak'at we said if you spread the salam greet one another then you feed the food and pray at night time you enter Jannah easy Allah is the most merciful make you enter Jannah for small actions you know the Sahabi the companion he, he became Muslim after Fajr he became Muslim after Fajr so he participated in the battle of Uhud. He died before Dhuhr. Imagine. He was a Kafir all his life. He entered Islam after Fajr. He participated in the battle of Uhud. He died before Dhuhr. And Rasulullah he said he did a small deed and Allah rewarded him huge. This is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He became Sahabi and in Jannah. So shows the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For great wisdom to show us is not what you think, what I think. It's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Talib, he helped the Muslims so much, but he died as a kafir. See, this This is wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So small action, the reward is huge. So same thing with the wudu. Do the proper wudu, then the dua, without adding, without wasting water, then one of the things, inshallah, will make you, it will make you a better place in the, in the jannah, inshallah. We said not to use a lot of water.
to wash your hand first. Then after that, you rinse your mouth and nose it with, with, with one same handful. And rinse, and rinse with the right, I mean, uh, wash with the right hand and the nose, blow, and blow with the left hand three times. And then your face, you wash your face all the way where the face is. Make sure not just the front, all the way. You start from where the hair is supposed to go all the way to your chin and make sure wash, not wipe. And after that, the, a lot of people make mistake when they make wudu, they start washing from here when it comes to hand. It has to be from the fingers, including your hands, all the way to the elbow right here. From here. And rub there. Wash, not wipe. Three times. Can we do it under the faucet? Yeah, you can. But this waste of water. The right way, either you have a bottle or the water, the faucet, you open it slowly, fill your hand up, close the faucet and do this. And rinse, the water has to flow three times. Same thing with the left, start here. This is, has to be washed all the way here. So one, not how many times you wipe, how many times you fill your hand. Fill your hand the first time, and then it goes this way, the water flows, and then washing your hands three times. Then the wipe the hair. You go from, you put the water, and you wipe from the front to the back this way, and your index this way, and your ears this way. Wipe it. There's no neck. The neck is not part of it. There's no hadith, authentic hadith about the neck. Then after that, your feet, the right foot, then the left foot. How about if I forget one part? Let's say I start washing my hand and I forget to rinse my mouth. What should I do? Start all over? Or start all over? Abdurrahman? No? Start over? Start over? No. You start from where you, where you missed. You start from where you have missed. If you missed the, the, the for example, to rinse your mouth, then you start from there. If you missed your washing the face, you start from washing the face. And then you continue on. If one of the wisdom, the wudu, not to waste water. As Rasul said, even if you are making the wudu from an ocean or a flowing river, he told Ali radiallahu anhu arda, not to waste water. Even if like you make wudu out of the river or the or the ocean. So this is yes. Specific, usually we wash with the, with the right hand. Yeah, you could wash with the right hand when you do your feet. So make sure the feet, you go between your toes also. When you wash your feet between the toes and make sure the water reach the heels. As Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one time the Sahaba, they rushed to join him with Salah. And as you know, imagine Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is here and you need to have wudu. What do you do? Probably have wudu because you want to get to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we love Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the Sahaba loves him more. And the Dalil, they follow him more. They implement every Sunnah he have said. They did not say this is Sunnah, this is Wajib. They did anything they saw him doing, they were doing, including the food. Like Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, uh, he saw Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam love pumpkins and Qara. And he said, since he, I saw Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi eat pumpkin, I started eating pumpkin. They became my favorite food. So this is Rasul Sallallahu So when they saw Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the about Star Salah or his Star Salah, they rushed to make wudu. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as you say, he said, used to say, I could see from my back. Remember the hadith we mentioned, it should be the row straight, shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot. And he said, I could see you from my back. Straight your rows. And then same thing when he said, he said, وَيْلٌ لِلْأَقَابِ مِنَّا Go to the heels from hellfire. Wash your feet right. Because a lot of time you see dry areas. Make sure you wash it. Make sure it goes, I mean, wash. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the leader. Yeah. Oh. I was happy to say three. I was worried you weren't going to Alhamdulillah. Sunnah. Between the two sunnah. Like if you put your foot, I'm sorry to put my foot my this way, under the faucet, you did it, but you missed the sunnah. Don't miss any sunnah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If someone make wudu like my wudu, then he said the dua, then the eight gates, jannah, the eight gates of Jannah will be opened for him. So, try to do as much as you can. Don't miss out. 
Anything he did, make sure to try to do what he had done. For this. Okay. The wudu marra wahid. Can I make wudu one one time? Of course. One time or two times or three times. For example, I can wash my hand. As you know, washing the hand sunnah is not mandatory. It's not part of the pillars of the wudu. It's sunnah when you wash your hand. So let's say you wash your head one time, then you rinse your mouth and nose one time, then you wash your face one time, and same thing, of course, wiping uh, your head one time. And so everything one time is permissible, is okay. And two times is okay. And three times is the sunnah. For this. The beard, you wash your face, then you do this. Make sure this is goes here. This is the water touches, so it reaches here. And some people, they wash the whole thing. But basically, tahleel, this is the sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ. So. So the sunnah is when you do your wudu, your feet, touch, and even your pinky, you know how you have to wash your toe three times? Mm -hmm. You have to use your pinky. Your pinky for to, to do the, 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 to between, the, between the, the toes, yeah. Three times? Every time you wash it, three times. Any more questions for the Risha? Okay. So the Ghusl, like let's make any question, it doesn't have to be wudu or shadow what wudu or anything question when we get like five minutes for or ten minutes, whatever you want, for Q and A. So the Ghusl of course, ghusl for, for example, say ghusl al-Jum'ah or ghusl al -Janabha. The ghusl, we know the sunnah of ghusl, to wash your private area, to make wudu, then your head, the right side, then the left side, make sure the water touches or rinse all your body. This is the sunnah. How about if someone went to the shower, took a shower, and the water touches all his body? Is that ghusl or not? Is that ghusl? He no. have the intention. Barakallah. So if he does that with the intention, you're fine 100%. As long as the water touches your body, but with the intention. And this way, we have ghusl and wudu. So you're good. You don't have to do anything. Just the water. Rinse all your body with water. With intention of ghusl. Sure. What is the wise pillars of wudu? Like, for example, just wash them once with the mouth and nose. The wise is like, not the same. The wise is one time. One time, if you make the ghusl one time, if you mean if you wash one time, your hands, your face, your mouth and nose one time, sufficient. It's wajib in one time. The sunnah three times. Everything once. Yes. Everything the same. You could do all the hand here. One time. Uh, that's a sunnah. Yeah, that's a hand sunnah. It's not wajib. Yeah. Wajib, if you miss what the difference between wajib and sunnah. Wajib, if you miss the wajib, that's what invalidate the wudu. Sunnah would not invalidate the wudu, but sunnah extra credit. Extra credit, you take it if you do it. So as long, I mean, but there's something like easy hasanat. And you are in a business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you do, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, the more he gives you. Yes, if you have a say, you can, in this case, if you go to the shower instead of Geneva and you make the ghusl, the ghusl will count for ghusl and wudu. But if you are doing just ghusl without anything like this, you have to make wudu. Yes. So if you make ghusl for Jum'ah, just for this Jum'ah, you have to make wudu after in order to make prayer? Does that ghusl make up for prayer? That's the ghusl that will make up for before this Jum'ah or for Geneva, then the ghusl will be fine, inshallah, as long as you have the intention. Yes. Rahman. You know his name, Abdurrahman, too. Okay. Yeah, but I meant you, though, too. <laughs> if you are hungover, you can't make ghusl. Would you, like, is there just no way to do it? Do you use the latest prayer, or do you use, like, did you try to find the... If you have no, this is a very good question, mashallah. If you have no water, there's no way to make ghusl. Then you make tayammum. You make tayammum. So, if you, the, 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 I mean, ittaqullah mastatat. If there's no water, you make ghusl. You make, uh, Okay, do what you can, the wudu, and just make the, the continue with him. Yeah, there's no way to do it. Yeah. Yes, sir. In, 
if you're in Russia, you can, matter of fact, it should be this way, that was that way. It should be always take advantage and make the right ghusl. But if you can, if you're doing it once in a while, it's no big deal. Let's do it. Some sahaba like Abu Hurairah, one time he uh, dipped himself in the water, and of course, with the intention, said, I'm good. So they said, which is he is, but with the intention. So once in a while, probably this part, this in Allah knows best. It said the lean and the left hand like this, like this. This is not the. This is discouraged and disliked, definitely. Rasulullah have said, "Do not sit like this." They said, "The qaida or the jets of uh, the people of hellfire." Sahab al-Jahim. Yes. Both of them, that it was not mentioned. Only the left. Get better. What if, what if, what if I did this? This is not the behind, this next to you. <laughs> okay, so you're comfortable this way. Yeah, he said, what, don't make it hard. He's probably, he said, like, do, but do not make it hard for yourself. He said one, one position. Leave it that way. The hadith, he told someone this is, the hadith, he said, that this is the jels of Ashab al-Jahim, the, the way Ashab al-Jahim said it. So this is the delil, which is good. I know Mr. Dalil. <laughs> so the, the thing is, it's, uh, yeah, don't sit like this. Next to you, like, Rasulullah said, uh, like one time he uh, mentioned the Hajj, and he said, well, do we make Hajj every year, Ya Rasulullah? Then he did not respond. Then he said, Ya Rasulullah, do we make Hajj every year? He did not respond again. Three times, said, he said, don't ask me for things. If I said yes, will become mandatory, and you're not going to be able to do so. So do what, you, uh, what Allah said, do not be creative and say, what about this, what about that? Deen is clear, and one way, خلص. he said this, we keep it that way. Don't add to it. Yes. Can you mention the nullifier of the wudu and, and the what? What break wudu? Mm -hmm. What break wudu? Yeah, break wudu. If you sleep, break wudu. If you fully sleep, till the point you didn't know, you cannot, you didn't know what what's what's around what's around you. If you like half sleep, if, if someone asks you, for example, what have been said, this not sleep it has to be fully. You didn't know what's going on. Full sleep. And some scholars said, if you sleep, depends on the position of you sleep. If you sit in, for example, like uh, Ahmed or like you, then you sh you're fine, even if you're asleep. But if you sit in, like, uh, for example, like, for example, like Mudaffar, for example. <laughs> yeah, this way, first you're done. Good jazakallah, yeah. I don't know what to do without you, Allah. That's good jazakallah. Yeah. So, like this, then you cannot control yourself if you're asleep, and then you're done. But definitely to be on the safe side, the, to be on the safe side, if you sleep fully, make wudu. So the other thing, if you uh, go in a state of coma, if you pass gas, if you use the bathroom, it's all invalidate your wudu. Yes. How about eating haram or having a najasa on yourself? If you eat and also if you eat the camel meat, camel meat, then your wudu is invalid. You have to do wudu. Now, if you something the jazz that touches your body, let's say you carry a little kid and he wet himself, you just wipe the area, you clean, wash it with water, you're good. If the urine touches your body, your hand, let's say again you touch a kid and he wet himself or something, you just wash, rinse your hand. That's all. So it does not invalidate your wudu. And not every time you pass gas, you have to wash your private area. So just make wudu. Yes. Right back at you. Okay, you make sure first of that's mean you're doing it standard. The sunnah not to do standard because it's become haram to gonna splash back. So you have to be careful. So the thing is, you sit down and this is the sunnah. Splash back this, you did it to yourself. If that happened, you've done it by mistake. You make sure that place that will close your word, there's no najasa on it. So there's no guarantee, not najasa, almost 95% gonna be najasa. So Salasim did it one time. Standard, one time was narrated, he did one time stand, but you know he was, how careful he would be, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not to. But here, the bathrooms, if you don't do it, definitely. Nowadays, like for Atikaf, if you're gonna use number one, a lot of people, they stand up, do plus the toilet with their hand, and they kick the toilet like that, right? You hear the boom. Uh, so the thing is, you remember, like probably an hour later, you're gonna be sitting in the same bathroom yourself. So make sure just like use it the proper way. Even if the people don't, but you do it the right way. 
So the thing is, it's, uh, make sure the proper way and the sunnah way to sit down. Yes, sir. The Rasulullah Sallam mentioned that we should said the whoever ate the lahm al jamal camel meat you should make his wudu, make wudu. Why Allah knows best. Some people they mention few things, but nothing authentic. We don't want to go in details with that. But definitely, it's, it's the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded us to do so. Uh, uh, Jeff. Yeah, the uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the hadith: if you make wudu and make wudu a good sleep, then uh, Allah will assign an angel. He said, Allahumma ghfir lahu, Allahumma ghfir lahu. He slept in state of wudu. So then my question, Jeff, you know how sometimes you wake up very briefly and then go back to sleep? Do I have to remake my wudu? No, you don't have to make wudu, but make the dua. Make the dua. The dua and make two rak'ah. Turn my different dua. What's the rak'ah, Jeff? I'll be like, whoa, what's the thing? The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man 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 ta'arra min al-layl, fa'khala, and he said, the dua, then make two rak'ah. Allah will accept the two rak'ah, will accept the dua from him. You know how difficult to get up? So difficult. If you get up when you like in the middle of the night or somewhere, make the dua, make the dua, make ghusl, make wudu, make turaka. The dua will be answered and the turaka will be accepted. It was mentioned this is the only turaka guaranteed acceptance from it. Yeah. Does the nisa the woman has to pay the captain man and their and their uh, gold, for example, or their their mahar? Let's say their husband gave them the mahar cash, ten thousand dollars. And you know we have to remember we have to have something called nisab. Does nisab the minimum amount of money you should have for a year uh, to make you entitled or make you be equivalent to eighty five grams of gold? So the eighty five grams of gold could be I don't know now it is five six thousand dollars. So if you have to have it for a year. Now, any money you have for a year, more exceeding than eight, what's worth 85 gram of gold, you must pay the card 2.5%. Now, for the women, the gold they wear, the jewelry, the jewelry they wear. This is something we have two opinions. Both opinions are strong. One of them says the jewelry the woman wear, does not use, she does not owe the card. Another opinion said, no, she does owe the account because of the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he saw a young girl with her mother, she had like miskatani ghalilatan. She had like two bracelets, wearing the, bra the bracelets. Said, so Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, did you pay the account for this? She said, no. She told her, would you like Allah to replace them with two bracelets of fire in the hereafter? So the thing is, shows here, for even the jewelry the women wear, she should be zakah. Now there's another respected and stronger opinion, she didn't have to. I follow the opinion that she has to. But this is me. So any money, any jewelry she wear, she should pay zakah for it, even the thing, the mahar or jewelry or so. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Hmm. عشرة ألف دولار. عشرة خمسة. مئتين وخمسين دولار. عشرة ألف. So the zakah and also the way we calculate the zakah, how much you would sell the gold for, not what you bought it for, not the brand new. So let's say you have eighty, a hundred gram gold, you take it to the jewelry store, tell them how much you would buy this for. Even you paid for it, let's say for example fifteen thousand, he would say nine thousand. So you pay the zakat according to the 9,000, what they worth right now. But if they worth more, also you're going to pay more jihad. Hi. Hi. So, during the day, I said this one in my mouth. I think you're allowed to like swallow the water. You're allowed to swallow the water if you this is left. If you had the water in your mouth, there's a hadith. Some people, some people, as they made weak, but really the hadith is authentic. Some people might say it's a weak hadith, but this is sound hadith at least. So the hadith said if you have water or something, don't let it go till you finish. Listen, if you have sip of water in your mouth and you say the Allah Akbar, swallow it and done deal. But don't finish the whole bottle. <laughs> yeah. What's like? Uh, there's like eating what? I don't eat it like If you did the Dhuhr time, yeah. <laughs> so you did the Dhuhr time? I even halal food will break your fast. <laughs> no, no. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so eating haram food, uh, haram food means like it's not non zabiha. So non zabiha food or the biha should be not zabiha. Well, so non zabiha food, it does not invalidate the wudu. But if the, the if the meat is not halal, you sin. You should not eat something that's not halal. Yeah. No, that's the dua. Allah will not answer your dua if you provide or sustain or earn masari from haram. You work in haram places, then Allah will not answer your dua. But eating some haram, you're sinning. But if you keep eating intentionally, of course you are sinning, your dua will be harder to be accepted. You can give your zakah money to anyone except for your parents and your children and wife. Yeah, you can give your zakah money to anyone except for, so the family member, if they are need, you get double the reward. Tafadhal, Isha. Mm -hmm. The masah, and the, if you make wudu, and make making, you wiping over masah, over the, the khuf. This, if you're not a traveler, will be 24 hours from the first time you wipe. If you travel, it will be 72 hours, three days from the first time you wipe. So, yeah. I'm sorry, what is it? You can go to the bathroom, but you get a rewipe. You go to the bathroom, you lost your you wipe again. You can rewipe as many times, you can rewipe as many times as you want, as long as you have the same khuf on. Yeah. Naam? You can run wipe number one or number two. As long as you, you just watch, said like when you finish using the bathroom, doesn't matter what, I mean, number one or number two, you finish using the bathroom, clean yourself up, get out, and then you can uh, make wudu and wipe over your socks or khuf. Yeah. My brother, you know, wipe his house and stuff alone, even though it's still so appliance or Okay. The brothers who buy big houses or small houses, doesn't matter, alone. If you buy a house alone, it's haram. The bank is haram. Paying interest or taking interest is one of the biggest haram. Matter of fact, paying, dealing with interest, worse than zina, worse than adultery, worse than, uh, than stealing, worse than a lot of things. People understand in this. Dealing with the bank, because Allah said, if you, I mean, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنْ رِبَى إِن كُنْتُمْ مُمِنِينَ فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ He said, if you do not let go the riba, the usury, dealing with interest, then Allah have declared a war against you and His Messenger also. So the thing is, this big. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely, fornication and adultery is a major sin, steal is a major sin and so on. But Allah did not declare a war against those. Even there's a punishment for them. But the riba, this is one of the biggest sins. So if you take a house through the riba or a loan, riba is haram one thing. But if you take a loan, even halal loan, before you pay zakah, let's say you have borrow from someone 100,000 to buy a house, halal loan, right? And you pay him $1,000 a month. And you have 20,000 on the side. Don't pay zakah, give it to the guy. So before you pay zakah, give it out of your loan. Even though the deal between him and $1,000 a month, then there's something extra you didn't need. Give it. And if in the haram way, pay it to the bank so you can get rid of it. Get rid of it. Oh, give zakah. If there's, yeah, give zakah to the people who owes. Yeah, big houses? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Not big house. If they yeah. own this, the there only. Some people who just want to get a bigger house or get an Islamic loan, it's fine, but they just want to get a bigger house. They, they earn enough money to. There, I mean, some, some of these brothers are, like, you could consider them rich. They just are in debt because they like to be in debt. Like yeah, yeah. I guess so. You didn't give him zakat because they bought the big house. Like this family called me, he said, we owe some, uh, so, <laughs> we, <laughs> we go, he said, we, uh, we owe some gas money, bills and utilities and so on, and we have the mortgage. I thought we could help you with the gas, we can help you with electric, but we don't help with the, with the, with the mortgage. So the thing, those people, they decided to become big shots, let them, uh, let them pay for it. They're not going to help them out for this. If there's someone in need for a house, small house, and he have no choice, no one renting him a house, and he have no choice, then he went to throw the bank, and there's no one will give him a house, 
except for this one, then that person could help him. And he won't have to go for me. Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Hashim. <laughs> <laughs> If they, as me as question, if someone have bought a huge house, so it become like a big shot, and he cannot afford it, or he can afford only the mortgage. This is the, that big house, half a million dollars. Are you going to give me your zakat, half a million dollars? Which is you have people like it starving there, and how they can pay their rent? No, you don't give him, of course. No, not for zakat, but like, do you get punishment also for paying out the riba? If, if, if you want to help, if the, someone got fallen to riba, and he have no choice. You fall into bed like some, some students, they took a loan, they didn't know, they took it lightly, and they unfortunately did the student loans and they started paying river. Then those people, you can help them, definitely, so they can get rid of the river because they really, they regret and they don't want to do it, but they done it because they, I mean, they didn't know and they had no choice, I guess. Of course, I'm not making the, the student loan halal, no way, no how. But the thing is, it's, if they have done it, then you can help them out to get rid of that loan. Abdurrahman. Credit card, the question is shall clear. Credit card still from Abdurrahman, the credit card, even if you pay on time, even like it goes automatically from your bank card, for example, you never paid interest, but you have signed haram contract. So what the difference, like you asked me for $1,000, I tell Abdurrahman, he gave it to me $1,100. Even you know, if you are late, of course, even you know 100% you're gonna pay me. Would you take my $1,000? You wouldn't. So how come you take from the credit card company? He said, oh, subhanAllah, Shaykh, I'm taking the interest. But you have been paying interest. You are to listen, Abdul Rahman, you're going to pay me 1100 by the month if you didn't pay it. You never do that. But with a credit card, you take it lightly. Throw the credit card in the trash, use your debit card, and this right away. Rahim, don't tell me you forget, because it's your last chance. So I have a few questions. One question at a time. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so the fees that you charge to the consumer. <laughs> Is the harm to charge like a late fee or, or like fees like that or like not? That's like too they charge fees. interest. Those credit cards, they charge interest. No, like if, you, if, you, if you're a business owner and you're selling something. If money, late fee for money itself, it's not halal. So that's a different way of interest. Late fee. late fee. It could be, it could be stuff, something like different, but if you take a loan, a thousand dollar, and take it like, if you would late, I'm going to give you late fee. So this is a different way of interest. Well, it could be. I mean, this is like if there's the delay and the, there's, the, the, there's labor involved. Like, for example, you have a, like an apartment building and, and I didn't pay my rent on time. Then you hire people to collect the rent. Every time they're going to come collect the rent, there's money involved, labor, more labor. So you have to pay more than they feel. In this case, in some cases, okay, but not all the cases. Mr. Abdurrahman. If you made wudu and you put your socks on, the socks had hole in it, has hole in it. Can you take them off? If you did not lose your wudu, yes, you can change them 20 times, as long as you put them on in the state of wudu. And basically, if you have holes on it, you can, you can wipe on it though. But this different thing. But if you made wudu now, and five hours there is still in state of wudu, you change your socks, no problem. You're good. Ali Hindi. If you have some, if you put the socks on, if you, uh, if instead of wudu, like you made wudu, you put the socks on, and you lost wudu, you can wipe on it. But you cannot put your socks on without wudu and wipe it on. You have to put them in state of wudu. Alhamdulillah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm glad you said, didn't I say, Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. You wear a ring? What about it? Hmm. Did Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wear a ring? Yes, he did wear a ring for a reason. When they, he was sending letters, I didn't remember the question. So 
when he, when, as you know, now we have a, what they call letterhead. For in order for you, if you write a letter for any institute or something, they will need letterhead. Back in the days, they need like something stamp. So the non-Arab, they wanted this in order for them to know this authentic from Prophet. So they made the ring for him, said, Anit Muhammad Rasulullah. Every time they wrote a letter for him, he stamped it. So some scholars said he wore it for a reason. Before he didn't have one on. But he had this one on for this reason. So some people know, no, said he wore a ring, so we allowed to a ring in the pinky, the left hand. Not done deal. So if you want to do this, it has to be one in this hand, done deal, or the the close opinion, nothing, because he did not wear it without this reason. So, but if you wear it, there's some opinion about it. But I would not recommend it because he did not wear it after that. Uh, yeah, he did not wear it before. Go ahead. No. It was supposed to be Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He made itikaf the first 10 days, then the last, the second 10 days, then he made itikaf for 20 days. But then he continued on making itikaf in the last 10 days. So Layl Khadr definitely the last 10 nights. There's one opinion that I think was by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said that, that Layl Khadr could be one of the 30 nights. Um, but however, this opinion is marjuh. Like they said, this is the weak opinion, the stronger opinion, the last 10 nights. Ibn Mas'ud have said that, yes. 30 and the last could be the in one and the third year, but definitely not. The Rayl Khadr only the last 10 nights. No different opinion almost. But there's an opinion about the Mas'ud radiallahu anhu have said this. Sahaba Rasul. Uh, one time uh, there was undefeated Arab, very strong man. In all Arabia, he was the strongest. And he was a very strong man. So he told Rasulullah, if you beat me, that means you are a prophet. Because no one was able to beat him ever. Then Rasulullah said, okay, for this purpose. Okay, so Rasulullah beat him the first time. Then he said, do it again, second time, third time. Then he said, Ashhadu Adayla, and you are the Prophet of Allah. Because he saw some power. Rasulullah was the strongest man, stronger than Umar and Khalid and Ali and all of them. Rasulullah and the Sahaba said, when the battle becomes strong, we used to hide behind him. The Prophet. So he saw the power, something beyond what he ever think of. So fearless, Rasulullah. So, Subhanallah. So the thing is, he beat him up so quick. So some people said, because of this, because of this, that's the Sahaba, the Nusara'a, or the Rasul and Sunnah, that really is permissible, it's not a Sunnah. Permissible to Sunnah, we're not allowed to do, for example, boxing, this is haram. A karate, because they do the bow down, so that's the greeting, this is not halal. So if you want to do it, I remember this guy, what time we brought him, mashallah, he's a good man. He, uh, he started saying, uh, bow down, he said, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's what he said, right? <laughs> alhamdulillah, it's a great, wallah. So he did not say that he did not, don't bow down, he said, Say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. The karate. The karate. Yeah. So this is something you could you could do. Yeah, this is could be halal as long as you don't hit the face. The face hitting the face not halal. Whether it's like a plain or serious. Unless you're defending yourself, this will be a different story. There's hadith like this, you, like you have like 30 man power, which is part of his miracle of prophethood, yeah. He's married for nine wives, yes. <laughs> yeah, this was, was proved like he's a prophet, that's he's a prophet, no one could do that. Um, uh, is, it, is the story true that I know, you know, one of the Sahaba lost their wudu after they ate camel meat, so the Prophet said, don't want to embarrass him, mm. so he told everybody to go. Yeah, back. there's narration about why the, the reason for why the camel, eating the camel meat make you invalid, uh, you don't invalid because he was a Sahaba, he, he passed gas or something, he didn't want to embarrass him. He said, uh, whoever ate the camel meat, no, this is not the reason for this. The, the opinion is you should make wudu every time you eat the camel meat, definitely. All right, subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashhadu an la Oh, tafadda, shaykh. Tafil lim hadda, bahna lim kayfi zara. Lath marudna li matta. But if you touch by mistake, touching the purpose is different than touching it accidentally. So touching I said, well, one knows best you do not invalidate the wudu. And try, like I said, not to try to be careful. Sure, so to go and mention, 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 to go and m
the Chuzay is forever trying not to. But it happens it's not once in a while. It's not. So if you're doing partial tikkah, if you what? If you're doing partial tikkah, and you're this, what are you planning on? What? This, what are you planning on? Is that what you're planning on doing? doing no, yeah, inshallah, partial tikkah. Yeah, yeah. If your parent wants you home, then because it's still was then you have to go home and then come back home. Yeah, if, when your parents want to fly home, you be obedient because they're not the. You compare between etikaf or pleasing your parents. In this case, pleasing your parents. But your etikaf is not done. Inshallah. Inshallah, Allah reward you for that. You leaving? Too? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Changing the baby diaper does not invalidate the wudu. Changing the baby diapers on feet, touch him, wash, wash him. That's not valid to do. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So do it. Go. <laughs> Maintain to the baby in the family. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> Mashallah. Oh, I have a question about the fluid that comes out uh, that not when you are with your wife, that uh, I don't know what it's called. Medi. Is it so? Is that a guess? Is it a guess? That's not just. No, just wash yourself like use it like a urine. Something comes out of your private area, if you're a private part, this is not the, the, the thick stuff, the, the, the thin stuff, this is like a, this is part, this is nudges. You have, it comes in your underwear, you have to wash it, and you have to wash yourself, and then make salah, make wudu. Yeah. Yeah. Say it again. For this, they call the midi, this is like the precumbent, this is something like the, the thin stuff, yeah. So this is like when, when you have temptation or something comes out. This is not, this not, does not require full ghusl. This only wash the place, the, the private part, and the also uh, if it comes in your underwear, wash the area comes on it. Yes. Amar Matana, what did he do? <laughs> Does not invalidate the rudu. No. The customer.